Another magnificent day here in Ballarat. We're only a few months off winter, so I'm making the most of it while we can. Today, what I'm looking into is the Stages Gen 3 power meter. I put the call out the other week to people to say, what would you like me to cover? And if I can get access to it, yes, I can cover it. Good friend Andrew has provided a Stages Gen 3. Now this is so new, it doesn't even have the plastic taken off, so. There we go, and it has the battery tab. I won't pull that out because I'm not gonna install it out here. I'll put it back in the pocket for later on. So this is a Gen 3 Stages. Uh, Gen 1 Stages has been out for a few years now. It was one of the first budget power meters and got a lot of attention because of that. A lot of people were installing them on their bikes and look, left only power, there are compromises there. So I'll go more into that later on in the video. But how to tell what version of the power meter you have if you're looking at stages, if you're buying second hand, maybe buying old stock or buying brand new and you wanna make sure what generation you have. Here's the graph from stages.com which is showing the differences between gen one, two and three. Pretty much it's just the stickers but on gen three, they have a little lead light on here for indicating that there's power and things going through. The specifications of this, well, there's really not much to it. It's just a Shimano 5800 105 crank. That's all there really is to it. But the specifications of the power meter itself, plus or minus 1.5% accuracy claimed for the Gen 3, about 15 grams of weight, power range between zero watts and 5,000 watts. Yeah, okay, it's got me covered. I'm not gonna go anywhere near that to be able to test it. Active temperature compensation built in, which is a neat feature because if you start off on a really cold day, yeah, the days are gonna get cold here soon. And it warms up to about now, 25 degrees Celsius. There will be differences with how these read power. So active temperature comp in here, that's a good thing. The unit transmits in AMP Plus and Bluetooth Smart, so you've got all bases covered there for head units, computers, mobile phones, tablets, whatever you wanna use this for, it's fully compatible, so that's a good thing. And one of the most important claim features that I will deep dive into with this is the claimed six times improved transmission power from the Stages crank. So why is that so important? Well, I get regular emails from people saying, I'm using a Stages crank with a Garmin head unit and I'm getting dropouts, what can I do? The official solution is to move your head unit closer to your crank. And typically that is, they're using an out front mount and they then move it to the stem, it works fine. Not optimal if you want a nice clean setup out the front. So six times more power from this, we should be able to mount this almost anywhere on the bike and beyond and still get signal from this. Okay, let's get home and get this installed and uh, put that to the test. We'll also run it through the Llama lab test up against the Neo and the PowerTap P1 pedals. All right, let's roll. Okay, out with the old, in with the new. So as per spec on the top here, each of the bolts should be evenly and equally tightened to 12 to 14 Newton meters by a torque wrench. So let's get that done. And now on with the PowerTap P1 pedals. Okay, that's the hardware installed. Now to check the firmware on this unit here. Okay, it's telling us here it is on the latest firmware 1.2.0 as of today and the update firmware is grayed out. So that's all good on the latest firmware already. Click over on tools and see what's up over there. Serial number, anti-D, crank length, slope, temperature slope. All looking good to me. I'll go back. We'll do a zero offset of the unit. Calibration successful, excellent. And I'll jump on the bike and have a quick spin to make sure these numbers tick over. And just to show you the frame clearance on the giant TCR here, there is heaps. 
between here and here. One thing to take into account though, if you're looking at a stages power meter, is that little gap there and your clearance levels between your rear stays. First ride out on the road with the Gen 3 stages on the TCR bike here. Beautiful sunny day in Ballarat. Some nice smooth roads and some not so smooth roads. Just don't tell Andrew that I took his brand new stages road power meter off road onto some gravel, but happy days. It all survived just fine. Over to my favorite website on the internet, DC Rainmaker's analysis tool, where we can compare multiple fit files and put multiple devices up against each other to see how they stack up. First of all, that ride you just saw then out in the sun and across the dirt, just bedding everything in, how did things stack up? Well, the stages power meter up against the PowerTap P1s, on average, the stages was just a little bit higher. So overall for that ride, 209 watts for the stages versus 203 watts for the PowerTap pedals. Diving in just a little bit closer to the first part of the ride there, it's all looking pretty good, tracking quite well, um, as you'd expect with a left-only power meter up against a left and right. Just the stage is just, it's a, just a little bit higher. You can see there the first chunk that I've grabbed, 244 watts versus 240. Across the dirt, now, not really a true test here. Things got a bit wonky. I was on the pedals, off the pedals, sort of half spinning, half not, so I wouldn't be too concerned with this section just there. But after the dirt, putting the pedal to the metal, bit of a sprint there, nice and responsive, and then just riding along, just riding along. And funnily enough, the power tap pedals was just a few little watts higher there. So give or take, depending on the scenario, and then riding home with a small little sprint there at the end. Again, stay just, yeah, just a little bit higher, but tracking quite well. Over to ride number two, Elta Zwift. Infamous Elta Zwift. This was with the kicker snap. The snap data is shown there. Ignore that for now. I was doing some other testing there, but what I wanted to do is put the PowerTap P1 pedals up against the stages left Gen 3 and see how things went. So zooming into the first half of the climb there, and what we're seeing is the PowerTap P1's 232 watts, stages 235. Super close. Stages just a little bit, just a little bit higher there. Um, but happy days with the sort of steady state climbing. And then into the second half, 243 on the power tap versus 246 on the stages. Again, just a little bit, just to nitpick that again. Not too bad at all. Third ride, now this is where things do get very, very interesting in regards to the power analysis of left versus right. This is an outdoor ride performed yesterday up a local volcano. Yes, we do have local volcanoes, extinct for millions of years, but they offer a nice little bit of gradient to ride up. Now, just riding along, just riding along, this was with the Favero pedals too. So off with the P1 pedals, on with the Favero Asioma duos. And what are we seeing? Well, exactly what we saw with the P1s. The stages is just a little bit higher. First part of the ride there, 255 on the Favero Asioma duos and 262 on the stages. Nothing to be too concerned about, but this is the interesting part. Mount Warren Heap itself, probably eight minutes or so effort here, which I'll zoom into, and we do have a bit of separation. So again, the stages is reading a little high. The Favero Asioma is reading well. I believe is reading true because with my fitness at the moment, if we zoom in to here, I can tell you I know what 350 watts is and it was 350 watts. It wasn't 365. So the stages was reading a little high up this climb. Why is that so? Well, that's your wonkiness coming into play. Well, my wonkiness. We'll scroll down to my left-right balance there, and it's not looking very pretty at all. So the Asioma duos were reporting the left and right together, which is true power, whereas the stages was grabbing my left and simply doubling it. So it looks like I'm a little wonky on the right at the moment, and the stages was reporting a little bit higher than what I was really doing. There you go. That's what happens with left or right power meters. It's a power estimator for the right pedal. So what does that discrepancy look like on the handlebars? Well, here's a side-by-side -side comparison with the stages on the left, the Favero Asioma Duo on the right, which is the true power there on the right. And you can see it bounces around between 10, 15, sometimes 20 watts difference riding up the hill. That's wonkiness. If I had left or right balance showing, I might be able to smooth my pedal stroke out and get those numbers a little closer. But the true number there for the watts that I was climbing at was definitely from the Favero Asiomas. And anybody not concerned with the power numbers there and looking up the road, they are wallabies, not kangaroos that are jumping around in front of me there. Jumping quickly to the ride home section, and that's all looking pretty good, with the stages being oh, not just, just a little bit, just a little bit higher, but not too much. So happy days there. And fourth and finally, the Llama Lab Test. 20 minutes steady state into a sprint and then some over and unders. Uh, 
Happy days. Everything's looking pretty good indoors. Average power from the Favero Asioma Duos, 230. Average power from the Stages, Gen 3, 231. So super close. And then the Neo as well, 226. So just a little bit less. Nah, give or take where it's being measured, etc. But that's all looking pretty good. In the 200 watt section there, there was, it was bouncing around probably three, four, five, six, maybe 10 watts but nothing to be too concerned about at all. Up to the 250 watts, everything's tracking along just nicely. Into the sprint itself. Now, where these jump up depends on the head unit on the using and what time you press go, but they're all looking pretty good. We'll look at the maxes in a sec. Over and unders and my 400 watts steady state there, all looking pretty good. Again, the kick in and kick out of the power that you're seeing on screen, give or take that about a few seconds, depending on how it's recorded. But it also goes to show the Neo is pretty rock solid. When you tell it to do 350, it'll do 350. 450, you're there. And then my just riding along at 400, it's all not too bad. Quickly down to the mean max power on the Llama lab test, one minute, 350, 348, 352 across the three power meters. I'm happy with that. Five minutes, 269, 266, 270. Again, and we'll skip 10 because it looks good anyway. Down to the 20 minute, 233, 229, 235. Skipping all the way down to the stats, average power 190, 189, 193. Uh, max powers 1141, 1148, 1180. That's happy days, that's looking really good. My take after analyzing that data from four different rides, that's not bad, that really isn't bad at all. Yes, there's the gotcha of the left only and doubling it, and if you're a little wonky like I was up the hill, you're gonna get a bit of difference, but once things smooth out, and here in the Llama Lab, everything was pretty good. Onto the final question I need answered. Have they solved that issue of dropouts with using out front mounts? Let's go have a look. With the power data from the stages Gen 3 looking pretty good up against the Neo, the P1s and the Asioma Duos, the final test was the six times more transmission power, they called it, on their marketing. So as mentioned before, people were having issues with the stages Gen 1 and Gen 2 not reaching their out front mount. So today with the Gen 3, six times more transmission power, I'm taking this to the extreme. Not only am I using an out the front mount, I'm using an out the front mount that's 2.7 meters long. Let's have a look at that. So what I've whipped up here is a non-standard out front mount. It does go to five meters. However, five meters is impossible for bike handling. So we've got 2.7 meters in length. We've got the Garmin 520 mounted all the way out here. So let's take this for a test ride. So short ride complete with a very, very long out the front mount. Again, that was 2.7 meters, about 106 inches or so. Let's have a quick look at the data now. We can see there's no dropouts whatsoever. Nice clean data feed from the power and the cadence as well. So I don't think we'll have any issues with people having dropouts with stages Gen 3. Okay, to wrap this one up for today, my summary. The data's looking pretty good from this unit as a left only power meter. Maybe a little high if I need to be critical, just a few watts here and there, but what's a few watts? It's definitely not a big, massive spread like we've seen with a few other power meters. I'd love to test the full left and right unit up against a true left and right pedal power meter system. Stay tuned for that. Pricing, uh, this is the 105. So this is the 105 Shimano low end, lowest of the low you can get from stages. Comes in at $530 US, 340 pounds and 650 Australian dollars. And obviously higher pricing for the Altegra, Durace, Cannondale, SRAM, FSA, and the left right models of these power meters. Obviously as a loaner unit, I've only had this for a few weeks and it will be going back. So I don't have things like battery life, durability, or long-term use to report back on. Keep an eye on DC Ramica's comment sections on his reviews of these power meters. Always a gold mine of information for people who have owned these a lot longer than what I have here. My final thoughts for the day are that Stages power meters are on the shelf right now. They've been around for many years supporting power meters and there's all the data to back up what's in the box. All right, thanks for watching. Your subscriptions, your likes, your comments are much appreciated. Thanks for watching.